Hello, this is Shira from the What She Making podcast. And today, let's talk about the joys and pains of creating for children. You know, it's that thing that you do and you moms out there, I know this will speak to you where you have this idea of doing something really nice for your kid. You know that they will probably enjoy it and it can go, you know, one of two ways. Your kid could totally be into it or they can look at you sideways and say, why did you do this? (laughs) I've seen it happen with like, foods, you know, you try to make something special for them, um, a favorite food or what has been a favorite food in the past or a favorite dessert that you thought that they would enjoy. And all of a sudden, they are just not into that thing anymore or They're really into it and they love it. And that's when it feels like it's a payoff. So I'm going to tell you a little story of, um, you know, our kids get into these shows. um, And one of them was, uh, when I say our kids, I mean us collective people's kids. Um, I just have one. So my kid got into... Gabby's Dollhouse, which has a ton of characters um, that are all based on different kinds of cats. And I don't mean like different breeds of cats. I mean, like there's a a cat that does baking. There's a cat that's kind of shaped like a car. There's a fairy cat. Like, I mean, like different kinds like that. Cute show. Love it. Um... But my daughter was really, really into it. And because she was really, really into it, I said to myself, self, she'd probably really like a stuffy um, based on this show. But I wasn't entirely sure um, how it would go over. And if you are any kind of creative person, then you know that this next statement is very true. I didn't even think about like consulting the internet about purchasing one. I just looked around my craft room that we're in right now. I was like, how can I make this cat? (laughs) Um, So I had like these stripy socks um, and my daughter at the time had been like pretending other things were this particular cat. Uh, the little musical guy, the musical cat. Um, And he has like these stripey, stripey legs. And so I had some socks and I was like, hmm, these fuzzy, stripey, different color socks would kind of work as legs for him. I wonder if I have enough felt in order to do this, um, the rest of his features, his body and arms and all that. Um... And so I'm digging around my craft supplies and I kind of pull some things together and I make a first attempt at it that has the features, but they don't really look like um, the one on the TV. And I present that to her and she's thrilled. She loves it. She wants to take it to school. She loves like I put together this little stuffy. I sewed them all up and she loved them, but I was not happy with it. Because (laughs) I am an artist. I might be a little bit of a perfectionist, perhaps like many artists, like you want it to be right. You just want it to like kind of match your vision. Like that's what you're going for. Hey there. So I wanted to tell you about how I break through creative ruts. And that is with my very own creativity journal, that is available to you as well. It's called Unleashing Creativity, the Inspiration Journal, and it is jam-packed with thoughtful prompts, lots of projects, 
and just every single methodology that I use in order to get myself unstuck creatively. So I'm offering this to you. I hope you enjoy it. It's available on Amazon and the link is in the description box. So I take another go at it and I find a way to make a pattern that is like spot on exact for this cat. And I decide that I'm going to surprise her with it after school. Um, so I put it in her car seat. I go and pick her up from school and all the way to the car. I say, hey, I have a surprise for you. Someone is waiting in your car seat. And <laughs> y'all, I open the door to let her into the car and she stands there for a second looking at the stuffy that I made. And she goes, why does he look like that? Now, mind you, he now looks more like the actual character than it did before. The first attempt did not look like the character at all. But now it's like, ah, for me, it's like perfection. Like I've done it. I did the thing. Here you are, my dear sweet child. It now looks exactly like the character. What you think of that? And she is like, oh, why does he look like that? She's genuinely confused. And then she says, why isn't he talking? And y'all, this is not like a literal, why isn't he talking? It's more like this, this toy is not speaking to me. And so I'm not going to like pretend to talk with this toy. That's, that's what that is. It's like, I can't pretend to talk for this toy on this toy's behalf. And I am crushed <laughs> as a mom, as an artist, as a maker, as a creative, I am crushed because this child just like totally balked in the face of my perfectionism, preferred the very imperfect version that I made first and um, let me know so. And that was a lesson for me <laughs> that I... That was a lesson for me. She, because I had actually taken apart the first version of the character, I could not um, swap them back out. Um, so we, she eventually got used to what I considered to be the better version of that character because it was closer to the animation, the animated version. Um, but it was, it was a couple of days, y'all. Like it was a little bit of struggle for me as a mom and as an artist. Eventually she did, um, when she did come around to it, I was putting her to bed and she wanted to take it with her. That was her lovey for the night. And as I was kissing her goodnight, she says, mama, since I have this one, you can make, just make, his cousin and give it to me in the morning. I love you. Thank you. Y'all, now she putting in orders. <laughs> Which is another lesson for me. That was an absolute, I'm not going to say that was a downfall, <laughs> but it was then that I quickly realized like, oh, this could spiral very quickly. Um, because there are a lot of characters on this show and because I am a mom of an only child, I whipped that John right up. I did. I whipped it up and the two of them played and talked to two characters in her hands, talked and played. I'll insert some pictures. Um, she was thrilled to have them, but I knew I was like, I cannot and will not make all of these characters. <laughs> as much as I love my baby, um, yo, 
that that was going to get real crazy real fast. So why am I telling you this story? Just because like it's an artist story to share, you know, there are ups and downs with making for anyone. And I think that it is particularly (laughs) prickly when you are making for young ones, especially your own children. You want to make something that they like. You want to make something that they enjoy. But there's also the caveat of they might not like it or they may like it so much that they want you to make more, make more things because they don't know. You're just not whipping it up. The other thing I thought about with this, though, was just how, you know, how special it is to have this growing up. Like I had my mother's creativity in some ways growing up. My mother was an art teacher and an artist. And there are things that she definitely did for me creatively. Um, Like just this endless amount of creative supplies because I just, I had whatever they had in the classroom we had at home. And so that was amazing to have. But I do love the idea of it is normal. It is absolutely a part of my daughter's um, normalcy to have her mother make something for her. And I think about friends who had that growing up where maybe their mom made their outfits, they made their clothes, they sewed, or, you know, their mom knit or crocheted um, items for them, be it toys or blankets or sweaters, and how it's sometimes not appreciated in the moment, but it it's such a gift to have, like when you are old enough to realize like, wow, my, the time, the love that my mother had for me, or, you know, sometimes it's grandma, auntie, dad, you know, I'm not trying to <laughs> say it's limited to moms. I'm just speaking from my perspective, my point of view, but just how, how beautiful of a gift that is even later in life when they come to the realization, like, oh, this is not like a some, something that was common. This is something that was special that my mom did for me out of love. And I didn't even know how special it was then. But now I realize like, oh, this was like no small feat. And she did this thing for me. So in my mind, I am playing the long game of I just really want to give gifts to my daughter for now, creative gifts for now but also just those special memories of knowing how loved she is that I would, you know, I'm always thinking of her and thinking of her in creative ways. And what can I give to her? That's not even like (laughs) from a store or maybe not even look good. I'll try to find a picture of the first version of uh, this cat character not so great. Um, but she loved it. She absolutely loved it. So if you are a creative mom out there, um, kudos to you. If you're a creative parent, if you're a creative, um, person just trying to like give the gift of creativity to someone else, my hat goes off to you. It is not an easy feat. Um, the rejection is hard. The acceptance is hard too. Um, but we're just going to keep making together. Thanks for listening.